meeting of the Putnam County School Board for Tuesday, July 13th is now in session. We'll have our Pledge of Allegiance led by Ms. Jane Crawford and our invocation led by Mr. Bud McGinnis. Okay. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bow your heads. <clears throat> Loving and gracious Father, you are the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you today for your blessings, for the successful outcomes of our school events, and for all our staff members, both the teaching and support members. We ask that you bless them abundantly, and we continue to seek your wisdom, guidance, and courage, and strength. Be with us. Give us insight to lead with integrity. Please. That our decisions may reflect what is right and good. Keep us from short-sightedness and pettiness. Help us to make decisions that are for the good of all and guard us from blind self-interest. Dear Lord, Please. grant us the humility to always seek your will in all that we do and say, all glory be to you, loving God, in your name. Amen. 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 Beautiful bud. Thank you. <clears throat> Have a presentation by Mr. Mike Perry on Lift Putnam. What you, what you need? Can please. Thank you. Good afternoon, and and thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's good to have you. Well, thank you, Mr. Buckles. I uh, have a couple observations after looking at today's. Uh, agenda. I'm glad I shortened up what I have to say. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And second, it just occurred to me that I find myself in the unusual position of addressing an audience that knows more about the subject I intend to talk about than I do. And that subject is, of course, education. Um, one thing that my tenure as the executive director of Lift Putnam has taught me is how complex the development and delivery of education programs and services truly is. I have also learned that to be a successful teacher or administrator requires a level of commitment and dedication that only a special kind of person is capable. If there are any teachers or administrators here with us in this room today, or any of them watching on this video feed, may I say thank you. You are truly heroes in this community. I hope to have more of a real presentation for you in the future but I'm here today to reaffirm that Lift Putnam desires to be a catalyst for change in our community by helping to support programs and services that might not otherwise be available to our students. As you know, Lift Putnam's primary mission is to provide a full day education experience to economically disadvantaged four-year-olds who would, in most cases, not be able to attend pre-K at all. I must say that it is nice to be in a venue where I don't have to justify the need for pre-K. Every academic study has shown that pre-K education is beneficial and important to the long-term success of our children. This honorable board is well aware of its benefits, but let me mention just a few. Children who attend pre-K have better pass rates on the kindergarten pre preparedness test, less truancy and delinquency, and are less likely to drop out of school. They are more likely to graduate and attend college and they obtain better jobs. But of course, better scores are not the only benefit of the pre-K learning experience. I recently came across an article in the New York Times extolling the virtues of pre-K, but it wasn't about scores at all. It was about socialization and the emotional growth that these young students develop. In this writer's opinion, better test scores were actually secondary to these other factors which helped produce better students, and therefore, ultimately, better people. I'm often asked, how do, we, how do we measure the success of our pre-K program? Well, I suppose I could point out the large percentage of students who pass the kindergarten readiness test, but I personally measure success a little differently. I feel that any time we can help take a deserving but disadvantaged four-year-old who may be sitting in a house with nothing to do, staring at a TV all day, and place him or her in a structured learning environment, a loving, nurturing environment, where that child will hopefully develop a love of learning 
then my friends, we have been successful. Amen. Like everyone else, COVID-19 had an adverse effect on Lyft Putnam, but I'm proud to say that it did not stop us and our mission. Yes. Although individual and corporate donations were hard to come by, we managed our funds in a way which allowed us to give as many pre-K scholarships in 2020 as we did in 2019. During the pandemic, we also provided large quantities of PPE supplies to help keep our pre-K students safe. We are currently vetting scholarships for the coming school year. Right now, we probably have about 80 pushing 90 and actually expect more. So what does the future hold for Lyft Putnam? Well, along with success, I hope that it holds change and expansion of our mission into many missions. We actually have a broad mission statement which allows us to take on different projects should the opportunity arise. We recently welcomed 10 new board members to our board of directors who are ready to help build our foundation. I'm confident that they have the enthusiasm, the desire, and the vision we will need as we go forward. When I was hired, I was told that it was to be a new beginning for our organization. I now know that a new beginning sometimes means you have to start at the beginning. <laughs> Before I conclude, let me encourage anyone who does not have a support education tag to get one. It was hard for me to give up my gator tag, but I did. Everybody who supports oh, education, I did. <laughs> everybody who supports education in Putnam County can take pride in the fact that they are part of something bigger than themselves. If our students are to reach their full potential, it is up to all of us. And Lyft Putnam wants to be a part of the success our schools and our students are having now and will have in the future. Also, our foundation needs sponsors. If anyone is interested in learning more about what we do, how we do it, why we do it, please let me know. Be happy to sit down and talk to you anytime, anywhere. I appreciate the support I've received from Dr. Surrency and the school district as a whole. While the Putnam County Schools, what the Putnam County Schools overcame in 2020 and during 2021 is truly remarkable. Lift Putnam wants and intends to live up to the designation you have bestowed upon us as Putnam County's Education Foundation. Robert F. Kennedy once said, there are those who look at things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. It is gratifying to be with you administrators teachers and board members who every day are not afraid to dream or ask why not when determining the best possible ways to educate our children. I thank you for your time today and God bless. Mike, thank you. Before, thank you, Mike. You, before you leave, let me just <clears throat> tell you as someone who, I work at all levels as many of these administrators have and elementary schools really get to your heart. We've got kids that, you know, they're living in tents, living in campers, living in homeless, you know, as described by law. And if they don't get on an equal footing and they don't get the assistance they need, then they're never going to catch up. Now, the superintendent and his instructional team have, have made a national model for how to go in and improve the number of kids who are graduating from high school. But it's really the, the key is going to be starting early and the instructional team has a new goal to work on, on several projects by, by grade three, which is just phenomenal. And this, what you're doing is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, our first grade, second grade teachers, they know who's not going to make it by, by the end of first grade. I mean, and you've got to, you've just got to, to do better. I mean, and, and that's, we're going to need you guys for, as, as the mission changes over time, safety or security, different things that the superintendent and his staff will need. It's just, thank you for what you do. Your, your group and your board just, you don't know how much it means to have somebody watching those that have nobody to watch out for. Well, Mr. David, I must tell you, I, I first became interested in early education when I served as a, uh, as a guardian ad litem volunteer. Oh, yeah. I saw uh, I saw children in this community that just had, quite frankly, no hope. No, no. And then I got even more interested because I, I, I was exposed to our pre-K program 
that we have at First Baptist Church. And it was fascinating to me. And when an opportunity arose where I could be involved with, with Lift Putnam, I certainly jumped at that opportunity. But we want to do more. I think we need to do more. Um, early education is the key. I mean, I, at first I was, I was sitting here going, I don't understand how four-year-olds it learn. It is absolutely. It's critical. It's probably the most critical time of education. Yeah. But I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> but uh, one, I certainly. One question. Yes, ma'am. Um, you said you had gotten roughly 90 applications already that you're betting. Yes, ma'am. How many scholarships are you able to give out? Miss um, Gilliard, I'm not sure how many we're going to give this year. Um, for a couple of reasons, it's a little uncertain. As soon as I find out, I'll certainly let you know. But uh, I think we've actually had more this year than, than we've had in any other year. It all it depends on how many can we how many can we actually you know financially support because that's how we do it. What we try and do is find the neediest. Right. Uh, when I say vetting, is to try and find the neediest child and get them signed up, get them in the program, right. and. Uh, so last year you had about how many scholarships? Actually, last year, ma'am, we had 52. Okay. Wow. That's good. And that was COVID. <laughs> that, hey, that's 50. Yes, ma'am. What are your uh, main sources of income? Well, uh, Jane, our main source of income should be our community, and that's corporate individual donations. Right now we uh, have, um, uh, we use our mortgage payment from the Campbell Building, which ultimately makes its way back to the district. And we also have uh, several grants, um, excellent grants that uh, we depend on. And of course, that's what I'm doing now is a lot of the administration, administrative work. But uh, hopefully, now that COVID's over, we'll be able to make a push in the community and get more exposure to what we're doing and, and go from there. What is the um, cost of a scholarship for a student to attend full time for the school year? It costs fifteen hundred dollars for the year for a student to attend. So, if if one if an individual wanted to write a check to cover the cost of a scholarship, they, they can do, do that. that. Yes, they can. Get out the well, our our Kiwanis Club has done it before, um, it sponsored a child and things like that. But well, uh, but that's what we're looking for is more community involvement and, and more early learning involvement and uh, go from there. We'd like to also look at things in Votech and different things like that. But, right. uh, that's where we are. But uh, always willing to listen to what our school board has to say and, and uh, ideas that you have. Keep dropping by and giving us up. I will, sir. I will. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you all have a Thank great you. meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, now, do we have any public comments? Okay, well, we'll move to, we have no, nothing in the public hearing section, so we'll move to the consent agenda. Ms. Gilliard, do you have anything you would think, like to, oh, she, wait a minute, oh, pardon me. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have a public comment. I more have a question. I've never attended a meeting before, so I'm kind of leaving the uh, center of the committee for a guide, so it's not asked my question. That's good. It's during public During comment. public, if you want to fill out a, a public comment, Card or just maybe your name and address, and then Are you they can. Are still out here? Mm -hmm. yeah, we can get you one. Yeah. She can talk and then she can fill it out afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Mike, can you let them know that they, she can come on up and speak, and then she can fill yeah. a card. Fill a card out later. Thank you, Mike. Sing us a song while we wait. Yeah, go ahead. Do what? Sing us a song while we wait. Very good. I don't it's think. Solo. You could sing so low, nobody <laughs> could hear you. 
Brandon, did you get that? She was going to sing a song, but she wanted to do a solo, so low nobody could hear. <laughs> I'm scared Aaron Mason's going to sing. She knows. She knows very well. Brandon, do you need a table? If you'll just state your name and your address. Certainly. Uh, my name is Janelle Kilgore. I am locally from here in Putnam County in Interlock, Florida. And please excuse my flip-flops and shorts. I was running errands and didn't make it home in time to change. So. Walk into the microphone, young lady. Pull it to you. There yes, you sir. Go. Thank you. Um, I really, I don't have any comments. I just have a question. This is my first meeting, so forgive me if you've held a meeting before and this has been answered. On Friday, the CDC released recommendations for school openings and recommended that masks be worn for children who are not vaccinated and that children that are not vaccinated remain three feet apart from other children, just further guidelines. I'm curious as to the school board's stance on mask mandates for this year. I'll ask Mr. Bowen, can you address that? And I know you've had conversations with uh, our epidemiologist. Uh, so at this time, we haven't pushed out anything official yet. Uh, but if school were to open tomorrow, our stance would be that mask would be optional. Um, as a matter of fact, we did push out something starting at the beginning of summer where they were uh, optional. We haven't uh, pushed out any reopening guidelines for the upcoming school year, uh, but we've had the conversations and as things currently stand, um, again, if we were to open up school tomorrow, mask would be optional. Uh, we'll still do um, the deep cleaning. Um, we will, um, the contact tracing will still be in place. Um, and currently, if a student has been vaccinated, uh, and they're asymptomatic, then they wouldn't be excluded. Um, but essentially, all of the safety measures remain in place that were there at the end of the school year, uh, with the exception of the mask. And the, the distance, it did change from six feet to three feet, Dr. Well, right now, the recommendation is actually three feet, not six, not six feet, and we try and accommodate that the best we can. I feel very comfortable with that recommendation. Others may not, but I do. And Thomas, that could possibly, hopefully it won't, but possibly change as this uh, of course. increase in the Delta variant. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, and I, I heard Mr. Perry say during his uh, very good presentation, by the way, um, COVID is over. It's, it's not over, to your point, young lady. Uh, and the uh, Delta variant is spreading like wildfire. Right. And, and we have a very low vaccination rate here in Putnam County. So, you know, if I could use this as a public service announcement, it would be go get vaccinated yes, and, and absolutely. have your students vaccinated so um, they won't have to uh, be excluded from school with, uh, because of contact tracing, which happened very often last yes, year, as, as we all know. Parents crazy. Right. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the vaccination won't be a requirement for enrollment. And I'm sorry, your name was Thomas and your last name, I'm sorry. Bowling, B-O-L-L-I-N-G. Bowling, like the game. All right. I'm terrible at it. L-L. L-L, not W. Okay, L-L, -L, okay. Bowling. Um, and then my second question, with um, the governor taking a position on, um, against, rather, critical race theory being taught, um, several student or teachers unions I'm seeing have like taken a vow that they will continue to teach material that comes from that kind of uh, doctrine regardless of state laws. Are there like safeguards in place 
to ensure curriculum is being taught according to proper guidelines and are is there a system in place consequences for anybody who chooses to go against that being that the governor's stood well, against we it miss france that she she knew i was gonna call her and we've actually uh, responded to this in the newspaper but very good if you'd like to give specifics on that miss france is our yeah. yeah. You want his question, <laughs> right? I got his question. I got kind of answered his. Um, critical race theory is not a part of our Florida standards, therefore, it is actually not taught in schools. Um, there is a lot of push nationally about it being out there, but it is actually not a part of our curriculum and is not in our social studies curriculum. It's not in any of our textbooks. Okay, so there won't be any. I was just kind of. No, we actually. As a mom, we just had a social them. studies adop adoption three years ago, and it is not in that adoption series at all, and nor is in our ELA adoption that we just adopted this year. As a mom, there are a lot of moms that are very much against this, and there are some moms for it. It really, even, we had, we had some complaints about book assignments over the summer, and principals have, have continually over the years traded out different books because parents were concerned that the books were maybe putting ideas or indoctrinating kids. So it's not, a, it's not an uncommon thing. You could have a teacher that feels very passionately about something that may, through innuendo, uh, you know, let their views be known to kids, but Certainly. that doesn't mean it's being taught. You know, most of, our, most of our kids are smart enough to know that you don't believe everything you read and you don't. Right. <laughs> or hear. Yeah, or hear. So. Yeah. Okay, I was just curious, making sure it wasn't like, um, you know, passionate things or topics that might come up through historical or classic literature, I think is necessary and part of learning, but uh, teaching people to hate America or anything like that. Well, even if we wanted to, the state standards wouldn't allow us to do that. Oh, know? very good. Okay. I began teaching Americanism versus communism. I wouldn't doubt if that comes back into a, yeah. you know, effect at some point. So patriotism and yeah. Yeah. very good. Thank you. Great. Great. Concern. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Great you. Great questions. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you. Very great. Thank great you. Questions. Um, nothing else. Okay. So now we move to our consent agenda. Before we start that, um, an, the annual equity update has been pulled from the agenda. What is that F? Ah, no. um, number four was, under G. G4. G4. It was G4. It was G4. Yeah. It, it was removed from our current agenda when this was printed. So, but it, just so you know, the annual equity update has been pulled. Okay. Okay. Um, and so now, Ms. Gilliard, is there any item you'd like to pull? No, ma'am. I am good. I'm just going to comment on something during during the report that I saw in there. That's great. It's under Mr. Bowling's topic about dental, the dental program that's uh, going to be, I guess, implemented next school year. Uh -huh. Thought that was awesome. I just I printed it out. Time. Yes, yes. So I'm good, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Buckles? No, ma'am. I had a good meeting with the superintendent and Mr. Bowling prior to the meeting, and I feel very comfortable. I, I, do, I do just pray we have a smooth opening of school with kids that are driving. I worry about that. So we, we're on the way. Thank you, Mr. Buckles. Mr. McGinnis? I have nothing to pull. Nothing to pull. Ms. Crawford? I just have one quick question um, on the early release times. I don't know because I was on the calendar committee. I don't remember that we the days that we set aside for early release. Is it are they on the calendar? Oh, so we're not talking about going back to home every Wednesday. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> no, I have nothing to pull. Okay, and uh. I have um, Mr. Bowling. Do we have from the facilitron? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ask about that okay. too. So I guess, do you want to pull that one so we can hear the order? I'll pull it. I, yeah. if, if, you know, I, I didn't pull it, but I, I should because we I think we... flat iron. Yeah. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. 
You want to make a motion, David? I'll make a motion that we pull it. And no. I'll, I'll second it. Oh, I'll, I'll, okay, motion. Is, I'll make a motion that we accept consent agenda uh, minus the report on on, on Facilitron. And uh, Jane seconded it. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. David Buckles that we accept the consent agenda minus G4. G4. And um, it was seconded by Ms. Jane Crawford. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries 5 0. All right, and if, if you notice the uh, screen over, well, it's in front of me, but it's to the board's right. Uh, the audience is left. Uh, that uh, spiffy little looking gentleman is called Trent Allen. Uh, he works with Facilitron, uh, which is the contract. And there he is, <laughs> live and in person. There's, there's a face to go with it. Trent, you mind giving the board a, a brief overview of exactly what uh, your platform can do and, and, well, essentially what it is and what we'll use it for? Sure, sure. Thank you. And I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. I'm down here in Hollywood, Florida at a facilities uh, conference um, with the other, a lot of other school districts um, around the state. So I uh, appreciate you all having me. I hope you can hear me well and see me, of course. I can't see you, but I'll just imagine that you all are all smiling as I <laughs> as I talk. We are. Um, what, one of the one of the good things about COVID, I suppose, is we all learned how to use video conferencing. So that's one good thing we have going for us. So quickly, um, I won't take up much time. Facilitron, we met um, Mr. Bowling in San Antonio at a conference and we introduced our platform to him. What we do, we are an event scheduling platform that manages facility use and community requests um, to use school facilities. So on the internal side for schools, that means it's a place where the schools can book their own facilities for after school events, basketball practice, anything, um, even things that aren't rented to the public, conference rooms, the ability for the district then to see and, 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 and depending on an approval hierarchy, approve of uh, facility use across the district. And from the community perspective, we create a, a rental site where the community can come and uh, request facilities. If you wanted to rent a gym or you want to rent a classroom, you can come to uh, the website and search for that. And then we can, they can see availability based on what's not already booked on the internal side. And they can make a request through the system that then Mr. Bowling has a, a um, and his team has a administrative plat portal part of the platform where they see all the requests, but they can also see all the internal use as well. The goal here, um, well, many goals, but one of them, of course, is to create a way for the community to come and request facilities with, you know, with ease and, you know, open to everyone and anyone who wants to log on and, and make a request. Internally, uh, it gives Mr. Bowling the ability to understand what all is going on at the at the district, uh, all across the district at any time? Why are the lights on at 10 o'clock at this gym? Um, uh, he can look online and his on his phone even and and see what is scheduled there. But it also gives him utilization data. We can end up giving him a data. We work with him to give him data on how many hours each building is being used, how many hours the fields are being used, and so forth. Um, so. Uh, on the rental side, a lot of data is, it will exist as well that helps the school district um, ensure that they are, are treating all the groups equally, depending on what rate category the groups falls into, nonprofit, for-profit, all of that stuff is something that we very easily can, can um, uh, configure into the system so that when people make requests, Mr. Bowling will have uh, information on who's using it, how much they're paying, how, you know, whether their insurance is, meets the district requirements, all of that stuff is how uh, things that we handle um, on the Facilitron end. So um, I hope I gave a good overview, but I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Trent, can you talk about cost real quick? Yep. 
uh, cost for using the platform or cost for what we pay uh, you essentially. Well, so what we do is you don't pay us anything directly. So what we do is we charge service fees very much like Ticketmaster or Airbnb. So if someone rents something and there's a dollar amount to it, there's a service fee that's either passed on to the renter or absorbed by the district. Um, and that covers all the costs of everything we do, including we come out and, and take photos of your um, facilities that are available for rent to the public. With, um, so we showcase, so to speak, the district's facilities, um, make it very easy for the community to come in and look at, you know, what, what, what they're renting, when it's available, how much it costs, what it can be used for, what are extra fees, custodial utility fees, extra COVID fees, all of that can be programmed into the system. It's all completely controlled by the district still in the sense that everything is approved. So anything can be changed. Um, the dates can be changed. You know, the pricing can be changed by Mr. Bowling or, you know, whoever is part of the uh, hierarchy, approval hierarchy. So it's just a 10% um, service fee that we charge. Very good, and uh, just a few brief comments from me, and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, I intend to for there to be a building level approval level person, um, so a principal or or um, someone at that level would make the uh, initial approval uh, decision, and then it would go to the district for a final decision, and that would probably be me or someone on the uh, maintenance side. We'll also have energy management uh, reviewing that daily, uh, if not several times a day, just so they can make sure that um, if the air conditioning needs to be on or whatever the case may be, they can take care of those needs as well. Um, also with the, um, with the district, I mean with the, uh, the additional properties coming online like down in Crescent City, uh, we've gotten several calls about using the gymnasium or uh, the cafeteria after hours and it's just various groups coming forward. Um, we like to, we like the idea of having this platform in place uh, so that we can be equitable and we can get, people can put in those requests and there's an actual platform and we aren't just making it up as we go along. Um, so, and that's, that's pretty much what's happening out there right now. So hopefully this uh, process will streamline that and uh, make things a lot easier for the public to actually access our facilities, but at the same time, make sure that um, they do have the required insurance and we've done everything we need to on our end. How soon do you expect this to go uh, into effect? Mark, the question was how soon can we uh, bring this online? I'm sorry, Trent. Yep, uh, we can do it qu very quickly. Um, um, we can certainly have it done in a month uh, if you're if you're approving it today. Another couple of things I, I want to mention is w one of the things that we also provide as a part of our service is support, um, including support to the to the community members. When they have questions, they don't understand how to upload the insurance or how to meet their insurance requirements, that kind of thing. Um, we we do the support on that. So email, phone call, li even live chat through our website. That's a thing that we provide. Another thing I wanted to mention is we are working with um, nine or 10 districts in, in Florida. The closest are your neighbors in Lake County and in Seminole County, but we also do um, Orange County, Hillsborough County, Osceola County, um, Manatee, Sarasota, Lee, uh, and Polk counties uh, off the top of my head. So we're, 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 we're partnered and have a lot of experience with how those districts uh, run and the challenges that they face. And those are part, part of the things that we do as well is, is, is share that those best practices share, um, in, in, in the case of a new district, sometimes they're, they don't have every process in place, uh, you know, moving to a digital system. And so we help, um, guide Mr. Boeing and his team through that as well. Thomas, I'm, I'm still in favor of the superintendent having the as our chief executive officer, having the authority to over to, to waive a fee or a process if 
if he so felt. We we have that flexibility. All right, as long as that's in place, yeah. I just want to make sure that you don't give that right up. We, that's the first question I ask. All right, Jane, you have a question. Um, I think the first one may have been answered. Uh, the district, or you, or your team, will set the fee for each facility, the cost of rental. Yes, but we will work very closely with the schools and with uh, Trent, and and I. I'd really like some information on kind of what the going rate is. Yeah, what do people yeah. typically charge uh, since they have a lot of uh, um, experience in, in, you know, pushing out fees. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of our, the, the front loading this is, is us learning what we actually should be charging, you know, you know for yeah. a repass. And, and uh, oftentimes we, in some locations, people are charged in other locations, they aren't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just quite frankly, what's what's currently going on. So. And my second question also deals with money. Will they pay on the website for the facility, or will they have to go to the school and pay, or how does that work? No, um, Facilitron does all the invoicing and payment collection and refunds. Um, so that takes that burden off of the schools as well. And there's also, I mean, you know, we're we're in hurricane land down here, of course. And so, you know, there's many other services and what times that that really is helpful when a hurricane comes through, suddenly everything gets canceled. That's a, a thing that our support team takes on and, and we refund the money. And then we also try to help the community members reschedule instead of the, the, the school district normally doesn't have time to deal with that. They just cancel it. And, that the community member has to just begin the process kind of from square one to make a new request. So we we help facilitate all of that and it's part of what we do. Okay. And my one last comment um, about waiving the fees. I think we need to be very, very careful about that because it's gonna get out if we waive it for one and not for another. Like one church gets it for free and then somebody else doesn't. I think that needs to be uh, very judicious. Uh, I, I agree, and that's that's that has a lot to do with why we're going with this platform. Um, no. Yes, ma'am. Now, there, I will say, I will make a comment though. There are some things that are currently in place and in common practice. Uh, for example, um, our arts at at Jim Pignato oh, yeah, Theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I those mean, those type things that have been happening forever and ever and ever. Charged. We right, right. So, so there are some things that are understood that we would build in and and um, and continue on as we always have. You still don't want to paint yourself in a corner. You want the latitude for the superintendent to be able to to well, have discretion. That. That's really in place, David. That is in place. I mean, if we do it for great grandma's 80th birthday, and then we decide the other grandma's 25th birthday. Is it Jane's 80th birthday? <laughs> I'm getting there. Well, I'm getting Thomas, close. I just just think for clarification, did you say that every rental request would have to have board approval? Or? No, sir. No. Okay. no, sir. Just um, oh, God, it would be at the, the building level, and initially someone at the district will also approve it. Um, but that's those are things that we can we control internally. For example, if we wanted to just give all of our principals um, complete access on con um, approving everything because um, I'm actually adding something to my plate or someone else's by saying that I'm taking a look as well and I'd like to do that at the beginning mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that things are being done equitably mm -hmm. but at some point I may have to let it go yeah. and, and just let principals well, make their own like decisions at their own schools help out a secretary or at a school who has to keep a Chrissy. You know, a planner with dates that the facilities are being used, that they that would be Just one less thing they'd have to worry members. about. But I don't have a problem as long as we have I mean, discretion to, the, yeah. to waive a fee if, if we feel so the need, the superintendent does. I, We've made that pretty clear. I know. I was trying to expedite the conversation Anything else? a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, Allen, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all for having me. You bet. Thank you, Mr. Bowling. Um, does anyone have a motion? I make a motion. We approve the G4 Silitron. Uh-uh. G5. Oh, unless they moved it. Let's see. Now. 
It's now four. G4, Facilitron, and oh, Facilitron okay. Incorporated Agreement. I got nine off the red. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. David Buckles to accept item G4, Facilitron, and a second by Mrs. Jane Crawford. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have no no emergency items. We have no unfinished business. Under new business, we have several um, policies. Do we want to do them individually, or can we do them all in one motion, at least item number one? Could we do them in one? These are to advertise. Okay. So we can do them as one motion. This is just to add Madam Chairman, I make a motion that we advertise uh, an item one consensus to advertise amendment to policies number 2431, number 5350, number 5410.01, number 5512, number 5610, number 5611, number 6107, number 6233, number 7440.01, and number 8660. Under new business. Second. Okay, we have a motion to ex to advertise the amendments to the policies that were read by Mr. David Buckles, and we have a second by Miss Sandy Gilliard. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries five zero. Item two. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. For consensus to advertise new policy 2431.05. Second it. We have a motion by Ms. Jane Crawford and a second by Mr. Bud McGinnis to accept item two consensus to advertise the new policy. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Um, now we move to the reports by our board members, our board attorney, and our superintendent. Um, Ms. Crawford, are you ready? Um, the first thing I would like to say is I want to make sure Susan knows that I'm not going to be here for the next board meeting. I'll be in Rochester, but I would like to Zoom in. Say that one again. No, I'll be at the budget hearing the next. Yes, yes, the next board meeting. And the only other thing I have to say is I think it's um, critical for us to be vigilant about our COVID procedures. Um, do everything we can in our power under the situation that we're in now because um, I'm pretty frightened by the um, variants that are going around and it seems like it's getting worse in Florida by the day. And um, <coughs> so we, we need to continue to be vigilant. So. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Um, Ms. Gilliard? No, I was just, I mentioned it earlier about the dental program uh, that's proposed for the coming year. I think that is excellent. Just, I don't know uh, the person responsible for getting it, for working with the health department, but, but you get you. you get two thumbs up. I mean, when our children come to school and need dental help and can't get it, or parents can't afford it, and they're sitting there with the toothache and bless their heart, uh, it is no fun. And so, I when I read that, it just and, and you know it. it it's heartbreaking because every year we had students at Black High School that had dental problems and, you know, on several occasions guidance counselors had to take them to the dentist and pay for it because we couldn't find any way else to help them and the parents couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford it. So anything. this is so just, just an amazing This is thing. great. This is great. And the prevention, my, I'm done. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Gilliard. Mr. Buckles? Well, Aaron Mace, you called me saying you were coming to the meeting. Are you going to make a presentation? Or so you're just observing? Are you like mentoring? Oh, okay. Well, it's good to see you. I was extremely pleased to hear from Mike Perry. Uh, there's Absolutely. nothing more important than getting our children started on the correct footing because it, it is not fair. It, it, it you got parents that, that have time and have options to take care of their children and expose them to educational things and 
and then you have some who are living in, in just deplorable circumstances who don't have any help. And, I, and I, spurring off of that, my question would go to Tanya. Do we still have payroll deduction for, uh, can we still do payroll deduction to go to Lift Putnam? Yes, sir. Yep, it's Thank still you. doing it. Thank you. Course. I didn't know if it was, if I'm still doing that or not, but yeah, I need to catch up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, no. I, I'm, hey, I when you, when you have sure. his kind of money, when you have his kind of money, you don't even notice. I just see he I didn't even notice I, it had been I taken. I like to go stand by Sandy's car yeah, right. or that Jaguar and get pictures taken with it. What it's, Jaguar? Have that oh, <laughs> anyway, that's I, I. You know, it's. I'm just. I'm really proud. I I watch what's going on. I'm I'm going to summer ball games and stuff. Watching the kids play. It's pretty neat. Um, we still got a lot of stuff going on, and they're playing baseball. They're not wearing masks. They're practicing volleyball. They're not wearing masks, but they will. We will be vigilant when school starts, and I know the superintendent and staff will stay on top of any any problems that we encounter. So I that's. Actually, Kenna uh, sent a text message while James was talking and said we're on top of it. So awesome. Good deal. Thank you, and that concludes me, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Buckles. Mr. McGinnis. Me. Okay. Yeah, I echo what Mr. Buckle said about the uh, Liv Putnam. It's been a vision for me personally, uh, just seeing what uh, the the pre-K units can do in a community. It just ties it all together and gives the kids that extra start. And I, um, I've i attended surf camp. My granddaughter was in last week. That was wonderful, being at the beach. And I want to give a shout out to um, this individual, Melrose. They've um, got a back to school drive, and the theme is put your money where your mouth is. Please support our students with back to school supplies. We want to focus on hygiene and school supplies. We want our students to look and feel good. You can donate toothbrushes, toothpaste, any hygiene items, and school supplies. Contact Marilyn Baker. Thank you, Marilyn Baker. And the giveaway will be July 24th between 11 and 1 at Williamson's Vacant Lot. And I just applaud this lady for doing that. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. McGinnis. Ms. Crawford? I have one last thing. Yeah, and right. I want to challenge my fellow board members. Oh, Lord. I think we should each donate to one scholarship for Liv Putnam. It would be two hundred and fifty dollars each oh. for a fabulous call. One. Holly okay. told me. Yeah, yeah. just. Okay. Oh, yeah. we go together. Yeah. Oh, Double shoot. Board. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, heck, I'm taking care of nieces and nephews as it is. But okay, that. I'll go with you for but one. I thought, you yeah, know, okay. If we could do it in our name, we yeah. could each donate two hundred and fifty dollars. All right. Gonna be, that'll Absolutely. be twelve. That's so. I ask her how much it would be. Do the math. I don't do math. <laughs> 300. Okay, three hundred. And 300. then, then we can do the you installment. Don't do, you don't do the math. <laughs> yeah, I don't do the math. <laughs> I thought I asked what do y'all how much it would be. You did. You asked me. You, so you don't I do the math either. either. Yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah. <laughs> nobody up. Oh, they <laughs> taught math. I should have asked him. Yeah. They didn't ask us, did they? But <laughs> they didn't sorry, ask that's this really time. Embarrassing. <laughs> it, is. it is really embarrassing. Well, okay. I think that's a great. It's a great idea. And I'll yeah, accept boy. that challenge. Me Good. too. Um, okay, so I um, I visited Crescent City High School and um, Middleton Bernie, and the revitalization, the are combining the schools is um, been a huge undertaking, at least at Crescent City High School. And uh, those custodial, the staff, um, the football team came in, um, maintenance, it's a huge undertaking. It's one thing for us to, to pass that, but then to see it actually taking effect is pretty, pretty Awesome. I mean, all the administrators were in the front office uh, around a little table, and there were boxes and desks and everything everywhere. And Mr. Adams took me through the halls, and they were stacked with desks. But mm. um, the football team got a lot of furniture moved, and that was that was great by Mr. Delaney to organize that for the football kids to have um, ownership in yeah. that Absolutely. move. Absolutely. And. Um, 
And I know that it's been a big a pressure point with the district too, and I thank everyone at the district. Um, while I was at Middleton Bernie, they today they were in a, a training, um, Dr. Shelby with his administrative staff. So I happened to see the two um, food service workers out there meeting um, cars and giving them food. And so I taught, I happened to have taught one of the girls. So I was talking to them, and they are feeding about five or 600 people. Wow. And um, as I was there, uh, they, they get a hot meal, and then they get a bag with juices, and you know I'm sure there's some snacks and stuff in there. And um, while I was there, a car drove up, and it was a, a lady and her son or grandson. And she said, you just don't know the difference this makes, and we really appreciate it. So hats off to all the custodial workers. I've seen bus driver names. Um, Ms. Whitehurst is moving people everywhere. And I just think that's neat. Everybody's mm -hmm. chipping in. And, um, and we're meeting a need in our community and with a smile on our face. And they they haven't slowed down at so, all. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, kudos to everyone that has something to do with our summer food program. And with that, um, Mr. Taylor. Um, we continue to work with the school board. We've been performing regular office hours for over a year, probably two years now, um, with somebody coming in every Tuesday and um, being available, working with staff. So we're very happy to, to let you know that the staff is still very, very busy. Um, they're, they've got a lot of projects, <laughs> and they're working hard. We're proud of all the work we get to do with them, the support role that we get to play. Um, and so we look forward to um, that continuing. and. We keep telling you that we're moving into our new building, um, and it got delayed a little bit, but it's supposed to happen in two weeks. Oh, Ooh, wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, That's so, exciting. Yeah, so we are exciting, and that'll put us right across the street. So. Yeah. Okay. That's the report that I have. have thank you, Mr. Taylor. And one <laughs> other thing, thank you for our new logo name tags. Yeah, I hope I can yeah. keep up with this Thank one. you very much. Um, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Sertzi. Yeah, I tell all our staff to get real thing. busy on Tuesdays, because... Alex is coming over. Just in case he says something at a board meeting, I want to know. No, they work hard all the time. They really do. So, uh, just just, just a few things. I did want to share that uh, progress is continuing on moving, and I don't want to say everything's perfect until the teachers show up and they find out if their stuff is there. Ooh. So, <laughs> but I, I know oh that. Gosh. Yeah, we do want to. We're withholding judgment, but I know they're working hard on getting everything moved. Uh, we met with our principals yesterday, and they actually, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago we did, our administrative staff had a retreat where we um, worked on putting together actionable items for our strategic plan. And we spent all day at NEFACT and, um, you know, really put some pen to paper and really talked a lot about what can we do this year to implement our strategic plan, where our principals met in here yesterday and did the exact same exercise. So we're going to be bringing all that information together and and I uh, talked to Miss Sarah Jean here she's going to be working on that immediately on making sure that some of those concerns or some of those items are communicated to the right staff and making sure that's put in place um, and then our leadership team will follow up to make sure that um, everything is going smoothly as far as implementing uh, these actionable items um, for this year I did talk to Mr. Hinke. He said he will be coming back probably in the fall and updating the board on just how the strategic plan is going in his first year. So we'll bring you up to date on that. Um, just to let you know, we do have a lot of kids that are busy this summer. I understand we have a, had a STEM camp at uh, CELO, and I understand we had 178 students wow. involved in that. Very, very popular. Uh, I understand... We have a camp jump start going on for K-6, and these this is uh, through a partnership between the, the school district and the housing authority. I know uh, Justin Campbell's been heading that up. And also, I just want to point out, I want to thank uh, the ARC, who recently put on a camp, a sensitivity camp. And actually, my granddaughter was involved in that, and I can't be more proud of how they're reaching out to our yeah, for our students that really need that extra touch. So yeah. thanks to the ARC for doing that. And finally, I want to read something that um, I saw in the newspaper since our last board meeting. And this was actually in an um, editorial 
I believe is in a Saturday newspaper, but Mr. Leonard, who's uh, the newspaper is always very uh, kind to us and really supportive of us. But I want to point out something that a quote from Mr. Ben Bates, who's also our real estate broker that we are working with. But he said that, um, you know, based on his many years of experience, he said that more people are discovering Putnam, adding that many buyers, talking about the housing market, many buyers are coming from outside the county. He points to the improvements made in the Putnam County School District graduation rate as a key factor. Mm -hmm. And Bates said the average sales price of a home a year ago was roughly 138000 Now it's almost 170000 so it's good to be, to me, that's a compliment for our entire school district yes. and uh, all the hard work that all of our teachers and our administrators and the students are doing. And, um, you know, it, it really is an economic driver. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, Mr. Bowling and I met with um, a couple of our local business people in the community, real estate people and business people uh, before this meeting today, and they confirmed that. They said we're on the cusp of a major explosion in the housing market right here in Putnam County. And, you know, because of a number of things that are taking place, number of projects that are happening. And so I think, again, we are part of that. We're not outside of that. We are a part of that and part of our community. And what we're trying to do is provide our students the opportunity when they graduate to be a part of that economic boom. So congratulations to y'all. And I think this is something we can all be proud of. So I believe that's all I have. Well, I just have to, one thing I want to say to you, sure. you know, when, Another I, thing. when you mentioned to us that you were going to uh, take your leadership team on a retreat, I never thought a retreat would be me back. I mean, <laughs> on now you have Miss Arnold back here. On Highway 1, no, <coughs> she knows what I mean. I was thinking more like Marco Island or, you know, somewhere like that to thank, have a retreat. Thank you. Where did Jerry Anna, I'm, right? Anna, I'm not, I'm not dissing y'all, but really, I did not think he fit for a retreat. Uh, a definition of a retreat is get people away from their offices. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Me I'll fact, remember that. Me fact is a good economical place for a retreat. Thank but you. Next year, we'll take them to that place you're talking okay. about, and we'll send y'all okay. the bill. And, and okay. they'll come tell us to approve but it. But we yeah. need to go, too. We need to be part of that planet. Yeah. <laughs> but we got a lot of work done because nobody could leave to go to their <laughs> office, and we fed them there. Right, Susan? Nobody can go out by the pool. Yeah, we, Susan did take out and brought her brought food back to them, so we made them stay there. You guys are to be commended. I, I just I know proud of all of them in the system. They're doing so good. Yeah. Kudos to everybody, and especially this year coming up. Our principals, when we met with them yesterday, and we have one or two of them in here, but uh, I think they were very upbeat. They weren't you would, stressed out? No, I mean, well, I'm sure they're stressed all the time, but very optimistic. <laughs> Erin <laughs> <laughs> told, told me that, that she tells Jason, uh, Mr. Stout what to do all the time anyway. So one of those she things. probably does. Anyway, she they tells, seem, they she seem tells to be me optimistic, the same thing. right, JT? So. JT, she tells me what to do as well, so I don't listen. Neither do you. I'm sure. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Dr. Cernsey, does anyone have anything else to come before this board? If not, we're adjourned.